Hello everyone, Rob here and welcome to The Noob DM. Today I'm going to be going over how I make my custom campaigns. So the first thing I want to point out is that I typically do more work than is necessary, but at the same time, I enjoy writing for my campaign uh, and it's something I do for fun. So just as a, a forewarning, writing a custom campaign doesn't have to be something that takes days and days of work. As long as you get the bare basics, you should be able to, uh, to handle a campaign and improv most of it. Most of the time that I spend writing my campaigns, I actually spend developing characters and describing the environment and not as much when it comes to describing what the players should be doing or what they're experiencing. And I'll get into that a little bit later on. As a new DM, the more experience you get, the easier this is going to be, uh, especially when you are practicing with your improv. The better you become at improv, the easier it's going to be for you in the long run, because the better you get at it, the less notes you're going to have to take. As I've said before, I've been playing D&D for about a decade now, so I've got quite a bit of experience when it comes to improv. Because of that, when I write my campaigns, I write a very small amount on what's actually happening in the world, and usually focus more on character development and the environment and the setting uh, around the players. Now, all of that's going to come into play shortly, but for now, let's go on ahead and jump into it and get a backbone set up for our campaign. So whenever I start out writing for my campaigns, I always start out very broad and very basic. By that, I mean the first thing I do whenever I start my campaign is I always find my initial start location and where I want to end. I don't put anything in between, and I don't give very much detail on the start and stop location. So this is helpful because it not only gives me a point where I can start and have a point to progress from, but it also gives me an end point or something I can work to. Now, as an example of this, a start point would be, okay, my players are in Baldur's Gate staying at a local inn. My end point would be they need to be in Waterdeep. So in this particular case, my starting point would be Baldur's Gate, and I know that throughout the campaign, I'm going to eventually make my players end in Waterdeep. I've got a place to start from, something to add on to, and I've got a place that they need to end up. Once I have that beginning and end point, I start adding in, again, very broad, very basic details in between. Now these points are more to help figure out certain plot points that are key to progress the story throughout the campaign. So let's say, while your players are traveling from Baldur's Gate to Waterdeep, they have to encounter, let's say, a cult of Asmodeus. So at this point, you can go through and add in a little bit of detail. It's important to note, when you're writing your campaign, when it comes to actually what's happening plot-wise, I would highly suggest not getting very detailed on what's going to happen. I say this for two reasons. One is because you don't want to railroad your story. You don't want to set it up so that your players have to follow exactly what you've written. For them, it may be a little bit more boring because they don't really get to make any choices. And for you, it may be a little upsetting if you've spent, you know, hours and hours writing up a story that your players completely ignore. The second reason is because I guarantee you, no matter what you write, your players are going to either not do that or find a way to break it. Now, I'm not saying to have no detail at all. You do need to have a basic understanding of what's going to happen throughout your story. What I'm saying is don't write pages and pages of details of this event happens and this is how this is going to happen because realistically you don't know what your players are going to do so there's a good chance they may not encounter everything that you've written. That means you just wasted a lot of time writing a lot of stuff that doesn't really matter. I also find that my players tend to have more fun if I respond to what they're doing as opposed to giving them what's going on in the world that I've created and allowing them to work in those boundaries. So to touch on the scenario we had earlier, some details I would add in would be, okay, we're leaving Baldur's Gate. Well, where are we leaving from? Let's say we're leaving a little small inn. 
and okay, we're traveling to Waterdeep. Okay, well, we're in Waterdeep. Maybe they're going to the Yawning Portal. Okay, and throughout this journey, they're going to have to experience uh, an interaction with the Cult of Asmodeus. Realistically, what's going to happen? They're probably going to fight them. They're probably not going to have much talking or friendly communication with them. As a tip, I would suggest if you do have something written up, even if your players don't experience it for one way or another, they manage to get around that certain event, still have it happen in your world. Just don't tell them about it. Let them experience the outcome of the event that they weren't there to you know, witness. To touch on our example earlier, let's say that your players, instead of taking a normal means of traveling from Baldur's Gate to Waterdeep, they instead find a teleportation circle that they can take from the Mage's Guild of Baldur's Gate to the Mage's Guild of Waterdeep. Since there's not a point of travel between point A and point B, there's no area in between where they can meet up with the Cult of Asmodeus. Since there is not a means of the Cult of Asmodeus to realistically interact with your party, since there's no point of them actually traveling, maybe instead the Cult of Asmodeus attacks the inn that they are staying at in Baldur's Gate. Maybe they go in, they interrogate the people at the inn, maybe they kill a few people, maybe they even burn the inn down. Now, while there's not a direct contact between the cult and your party, this does allow you to give an indirect contact to the uh, to your party, allowing them to be aware of the cult and possibly letting your party know that the cult's looking for them. So now that you've gone through and you've got more or less a basic structure of what you want to happen in your campaign, now is the time to add in details. As I said, I only write brief synopsises of the events that are taking place, but what I do write very detailed on is... NPCs, and the environment. So I found that as long as I understand the NPC and I know who they are, it's easy for me to interact as them. So that being said, it allows me to only write more or less key topics that this NPC needs to pass on to the players. And the rest of it I can make up as I go. I know the NPC and I have an idea of how they would interact with people of the world, so it makes it a lot easier for me to convey information and make it feel a lot more natural. Same thing for the environment. I'll give detailed description of what's around the players so that they can see the world and interact with it as they see fit. Now, I see it as, while the players can go through and completely change the campaign with one simple decision, typically they're not going to really be able to affect the NPCs and the environment. That is, unless they set the environment on fire. Or they set the NPC on fire. Just as I said before, understanding the NPCs and understanding the environment allows you to be more reactive to your players. And let's be honest, when we play our games of D&D, all we are really doing is just reacting to whatever our players do. The other good thing about writing your story like this is it's going to give you a lot of experience with improv. And at the end of the day, as long as you can interact with your players and improv scenarios and react to them in a natural way, typically you're going to have a lot of fun. And that's pretty much how I write my campaigns. Follow me on Twitter at the Noob DM. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Remember, have fun.